is going to set you over kingdoms. It's going to set you over nations. God is going to cause you to uproot. Give thanks unto the Lord. Pray to I beat you. I slap you. I slap you. God is so faithful, hallelujah. When you cleave unto God, God will never leave you. But I will hate. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you once again. We bless you, O oh God. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. We pray that, Lord, our thanksgiving will never depart from our mind. We will continue to thank you when we ever remember you. Father, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you speak to me, O God. Give me the strength. So that your word will be settled this one. Amen. Put your hands together once again. Chongwei! Chongwei! How many of us have a Bible? Do you have your Bible? Are you ready to hear the word of God? Open to the book of First Thessalonians. The book of First Thessalonians. Yes, they will say help me to read the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the verse 18. Amen. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Amen. 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 I cannot hear the amen. 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 Are we in the house? Yes. The Bible says, in everything, not some, in everything, give thanks and praise unto the Lord through Christ Jesus, because that is the will of God concerning about you. Many of us today, we don't believe the Bible. And because of that, we don't believe the Bible. We don't trust our own self. And many Christians today even hate their own self. We hate ourselves because what we are looking for is not coming. But I'm to tell you this morning that the work of God is so great and big that God still needs people who will work for Him. We thank God for the life of the Matthews, the early people who through them Christianity stands. And because it stands, that is why you are here shouting hallelujah. Amen. Had it not been them, where will you be? A Christian beggar. Many Christians today have become beggars. And because we have become beggars, we are looking for the right channel to beg. Because we have begged before God, beg, 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 and result is not coming. And because the result is not coming, we are looking for another way. Mind you about the prophets that are in this day. Many churches are going on. Churches are being built. But which church is the right church? Amen. Which prophet is the right prophet? This yeah. one is something that came across through the Sunday school. But I am telling you that prophets of nowadays, many of them are eating at the same table of Jezebel. They go to eat with Jezebel and they come back to preach to you. If only we are to give thanks 
and praise unto God and to be satisfied of who we are, you will continue to praise God. Because while you are going to look for help, it will never solve your problem. The only way that you can solve your problem is that go to God. Give Him thanks. Don't ask anything. If you begin to ask, you become a Christian beggar. You beg and you beg and you beg and when things are not okay, you just have to leave. You don't want to see God no more. There are many Christians like that. You don't want to see no more God. But that today, I want to tell you about somebody whom God used. But the Bible says in the book of Hebrew, chapter 11, the verse 32, he said that, should I tell you about Gideon? Hallelujah. Should I tell you about Samson? Should I tell you about these people who through God, they closed the mouth of the lions. They were so great that they did not they did not look anything from the Lord. They did not pray anything from the Lord. But all that they have to do is to work for God. The Bible says that these men, some of them were sore into two. Some of them, they put them into hot water, hot oil. On the mountains, they were working with only skin, goat skin. But here, are the people that the promise of God passed them. They could not receive the promise. Who is to receive the promise? We, today, are receiving a promise. Amen. Amen. Be thankful unto the Lord. The way you are, be thankful. Because there are so many people who are not having this privilege. But you are having this privilege. Go to the mortuary. Go to the most hospitals. You see people there. But if you, even if you see them, you will not think about human being again. You will tell yourself, of God, why should you create us? Many things are happening. But you, the Lord has been faithful. The Lord has been faithful unto you. Amen. Bible said that this very prophet, in the mother's womb, he was already ordained. He was sanctified to be a prophet. He is one of the greatest prophets among the major prophets. And who am I talking about? Jeremiah. I am talking about Jeremiah. Bible says in the mother's womb of Jeremiah, he was being ordained, sanctified. And he said, I'm joy by Jeremiah, my good boy. I am to send you to Judah to preach the word, to tell the people that they have to change their ways. <laughs> Jeremiah said to God, who am I? Why do you want to send me? I am so young. And the Bible said that, look here. I have set you upon nations. And I have made you a pillar. I have made you a brass. Go. I have touched your mouth with my words. Go and do my work. Go and do my work. But don't look at their faces. Because if you look at their faces, if you look at the faces of the enemies, I will join you to them and flash you up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bible said that and Jeremiah have to go and have to leave. Let us go to the book of Lamentation. A man whom God has ordained. Listen to what he went through. Many of us we are going through problems one way or the other. But yes still we lament. God has never sent you. The Lord has never sent you. But when you look at the methods, God sent them and God used them. You are having a place. Settle down here. Very 
Sinai school, enjoying the promises of God. Listen, the book of Lamentation chapter 3, start from the verse 1. And listen, come forward and have a speaker, so that we can hear the word of God. I am talking about great is the faithfulness of God. Lamentation 3, start from chapter 1. The Bible says Jeremiah said, I am a man who has seen affliction, whom have seen pain, whom have seen suffering, whom have seen. How many people here have seen affliction? How many people? Can I get somebody? Have you ever seen affliction? Have you ever entered into pain? But here is a man that he is saying that I have seen afflictions. I have seen pain. Why? Because he thought that when God has ordained him, everything is on silver platter. Many of us, when you come to God, we think that things will be so easy. But I tell you that Christianity on will be Hallelujah, somebody. Christianity is not something lively up yourself, your own self. Don't hate. Don't think about somebody that that very person is having a castle because he's having a castle. You want a mountain. It is not so. That is the will of God concerning about you, the way that you are going through, the sickness that you are in, the problems that you are in. Thank God. Amen. Go on, let me hear you. He has led me and made me walk in darkness and not in light. He has made me to walk in darkness, but not light. Somebody who is ordained. In Judah, things were not going on and they are all idol worshippers. They love to worship idols. So God has to proclaim his word. The word of God has to go to them. That they hold one such thing. Oh, repent. And come out of your idol worship. And Jeremiah here is saying that he has made me to do what? To walk in darkness, but not light. Christianity is full of light. Darkness can never ever block Christianity and the Bible says that darkness and light they don't do what they have nothing to do. Jeremiah, an ordained prophet, ordained. Let, let me hear what. Surely he has turned his hand against me. The Lord who sent me has turned his hand against me. He doesn't want to see me again. Here, Jeremiah was so afraid because the place that he has gone, it is too tough for him. The situation that he's in is too tough for him. The situation that you are in, it is too tough for you. And because of that, you are lamenting. Jeremiah kept on lamenting. He was afraid. And because of that, they called him the weeping, the weeping prophet. That is the name of Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. He was complaining. Somebody that the Lord has ordained you, go and proclaim my word. You are so afraid. Jeremiah was so afraid of things. So it is today, many Christians, we are also afraid. We think that what we are looking for, it will never come. But I tell you, when you cleave on to God, all things are possible. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Let me hear the word of God. Throughout the day. He has aged my flesh and my skin and broken my bones. You hear that? He is not having trust in God again. That God can change this. He said that he has made my skin broken. My skin has been dried up because for about five years I haven't had even my bath. Where do I sleep? God doesn't care about me. Has God forgotten me? God will never forget you. Amen. Go on. He has etched my flesh and my skin and broken my bones. He has besieged me and surrounded me with bitterness and woe. You hear that? Go on. Go on. He has set me in dark places like the dead of long ago. 
He has hedged me in so that I cannot get out. You hear that? Jeremiah was saying that the Lord has hedged him. The Lord has made war around me. And because of that, because of the war, I cannot get my way out. He has led me to bitter waters. Uh, bitter waters. Yesterday we enjoyed a prayer meeting, the morning time and the evening time. I talked a little bit about the morning time our dear brother talked about the Lord, the Good Shepherd, Psalm 23. The Bible says that, Ye do I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil. Here, Jeremiah was saying that the sorrows of death has compassed him. You see, when we are looking for if we are looking for something from the Lord and the thing is not coming, we keep on crying and crying and crying and we become so sad. We enter into a mode of sadness and whenever the spirit of sadness fall upon you, you begin to cry and the soul that is in you leave you. Now, when crying goes on, that means you are giving the soul food to eat. Cry is to give the soul strength to come back. It is true. The strength of the soul is for you to cry. Now when you cry, you enter into a state of bitterness. When you cry, you think that nobody loves you. When you cry, you think that the whole world has torn against you. And the only thing that you say that, God, why is it me? Why have you turned against me? Jeremiah said, why God have you turned against me? Because you told me that right in your mother's womb, I was ordained as a prophet. But look at me. You have made a wall against me. Many of us, this is what we are thinking. That God has made war. Because you are a Christian beggar, you break all the time from God, and God is not giving to you. You say that, God, why me? Why me? Jeremiah said, Lord, why me? Let me hear what. He has made my chain heavy. He has made my chain heavy. The chain is around me. I cannot move no more. He has made my chain heavy. Let me hear you. Even when I cry and shout, he shouts out my prayer. You hear that? And this is what is happening to the Christians of today. This is what we are thinking. He said that. When even I cry to my God, he shouts my prayer out. He doesn't want to hear me anymore because he has sent me to do his work. How many times God has sent you? I want to hear you. I want to see you by hand. How God ever sent you? How God ever sent you? Are you working for the Lord? Do you love the Lord? Do you praise the Lord? Give thanks unto the Lord. Because that is not your time. We are talking about the meteors, the olden days people who set Christianity on board for you to enjoy it now today. Give thanks unto the Lord all the time. Somebody put your hands together, hallelujah. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. He has locked my ways with heel stone. He has made my path crooked. He has been to me like a bear lying in wait, like a lion in ambush. He has torn aside my ways and torn me in pieces. Oh. He has made me desolate. Oh, Jesus Christ. He has bent his bow and set me up as a target for the arrow. The Lord has oh, it is too much. Jeremiah now here is condemning the Lord that he has become a target of the enemy. The Lord has set his bow and he has made him a target to shoot him down. Is it true? No. He was in a trial. Somebody here, God is trying you. The situation that you are in, God is trying you. God wants to see your faith. God wants to know who you are. God wants to know that you want to serve him. Many people come to knock at the door of God. 
And when God doesn't reply, the next day you see him with his Bible, the next day you see him with his clothes, go to another place. He wants to satisfy himself to see that what he is looking for, he can get it from another end. But it is not so. My dear sister, it is not so. Serving God is time. Coming to the Lord is time. To have, to have an access to go to the Lord, it is time. It is not only one day. Many people come to the Lord and that very moment, things are okay for them. But it's you, you can be in the sanctuary for a thousand years and you cry and you may know that or you may see that God is not answering your cry. Bible says that in Jeremiah said that when I pray, he shout out. He bang at the door at me. He doesn't want to listen to me no more. He has made my way crooked. I wasn't like that. In my mother's womb, I did not tell you to ordain me. But your words said that you have ordained me. But why am I suffering? You have caused me to be desolate. Nothing that around me. I cannot even take my bath. But you, the Lord is so good. The Lord is so faithful. The faithfulness of the Lord is too big upon you. The Bible says when he was looking for water to drink, on the cross, they gave him vinegar. When we are eating salad in the house and the vinegar is too much, at times you don't want to eat it again. And how much more you taking, drinking vinegar without leaves, without tomatoes, you will never eat. But here is a man being ordained that they've given him vinegar to drink. Yes, let me hear you. He has caused the arrows of his quiver to pierce my loins. Mm -hmm. I have become the ridicule of all my people, mm -hmm. and they are taunting song all the day. You hear that? His own people have turned him into mock mockery. They mock at him. And that is a song of his baby. Maybe you are going through trouble. You have a lot of friends. Now your friends have left you. You have been a mockery of the day. People talk about you. When they start to talk about you and they see that you are coming, you see that one will pass east, one will pass north, and the other, and they will run away. <laughs> You become the song of the day for people to sing about you. But I tell you, it is the word of God. Bible says that in all things, give thanks and praise unto the Lord. Because that is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Concerning about you, what you are going through. It is the work of the Lord. But at the long run, at the end, God will make things possible. Amen. Bible says that in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, Bible says that in its own time, God will make this beautiful. If only you understand this very scripture, you see that God is so wonderful because you cannot plant corn on December expecting God to make you harvest. Because December is not a time for planting corn. When you go to Africa, the good farmers now, they have started planting their corn. Because very soon and very later, they know that God is going to pour rain upon the corn so that at its own time, leave it aside. Now, pregnancy takes nine months. You are not expecting or praying that God, this pregnancy, because I want the second one, let it take three months. It will never work. <laughs> Bible says that at its own time, in the ninth month, God is going to make this beautiful. Somebody put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. In his own time, in the time of God, God will cause you to smile. Mm -hmm. Let me hear what Jeremiah. He has filled me with bitterness. Mm -hmm. He has made me drink good water. Mm -hmm. He has also broken my teeth with gravel. Jesus Christ. And covered me with ashes. Mm -hmm. You have moved my soul far from peace. I have forgotten prosperity. 
you the Lord has moved the peace that you were having. Maybe when you were in the world, you were having peace. But now that you have joined Christianity, now that you want to serve God, things are so rough. You are in a trial. The Lord is trying you. I have said it before that not that you are a Christian, things will be easy. It wasn't easy for Samson. It wasn't easy for Gideon. It, is, it was not easy for Stephen. Bible says that because of the Lord, they stoned him. God said to Paul, God said to Paul, Paul, because of you, because of me, you will suffer. You will suffer. And it came to a time that Paul had to go to Rome with Barnabas. Barnabas said that, Rome, I will never go. But Paul said that it is the time for me to go to Rome. And really, God said that you will suffer. Really, you will suffer. Christianity is to suffer. Christianity is to suffer. And you have to bear it. Because the position that you are in, it is the will of God concerning about you. But when things are all over, He makes it beautiful for you. And when people see you, they will smile. And when people see you, they will give their life back to Christ. Because when you were sitting down, or when you were a laughing stock, people will say that, hey, the juju way you go take is good. But they don't know that Christ is doing something new in your life. Hallelujah, somebody. When things are bad, they talk about you. When things are good, still they talk about you. What type of world are we in? Is it Christianity? Instead of you to go down and pray and intercede on somebody's behalf. My sister, my brother is so suffering. Now let me pray for him so that he will come out from the suffering. You begin to laugh. To laugh at him because your own is good. Change your mind. Change your attitude. Pray. Bible says that he was praying. He was 986 years. But yet still, he was praying, interceding, fasting. For whom? For you. That age, what am I to do with fasting? 86 years, I have to fast. What am I looking for again? But Anna was doing it because of you and I. Amen. Amen. Let me hear what. And I said, my strength and my hope have perished from the Lord. Mm. Remember my affliction mm. and roaming, mm -hmm. the wormwood and the game. Mm -hmm. My soul still remembers and sinks within me. Mm -hmm. This I recall to my mind, mm -hmm. therefore I have hope. Mm. You hear that? All the things that he went through, the bitter water that he drank, the, the vinegar that he drank. Now he sat down. When the hope all is gone out of him, when he started crying, the Bible said that he, he cried to seek for another thing. But now he sat down and think of everything. He put everything in stock and think about God. He said that now I can see that I have hope. My child, my child, my church, look here, you have hope in the Lord. Amen. Everything that you are going through, God have a time for you. Time is not for everybody. Everybody has his own time. You have your time today, tomorrow I'll have my time, next week you have your time. Don't think that that very thing is okay for that very but by you your own is not good. Who told you? Your own will be better. Amen. My sister, your own, it will be better for you. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. It will be better for you. Amen. Don't think that things will be so. Yesterday at the prayer meeting, I was saying that. Don't think that you have traveled from the whole, from, the whole, from Ghana to Nigeria, to Italy. And God will see you just like I know. The Lord will cause you 
to fly. Amen. Amen. If you are walking, you will fly. Amen. Don't think about anything Amen. so that you get yourself into trouble. Let the righteousness of God lead you. Because the good shepherd always finds food for what? For his sheep. The good shepherd all the time feed the flock. He takes you beside the still waters. Whereby that you have eaten, finished, he will take you to a place that you will drink. David said, Thy rod and thy staff, it comforts me. Whenever you are doing something that is not good, the staff and the rod, you think God will take the rod to hit you, my child. The Bible says that we should not do it, we should not spare the rod. So when God is scanning you, when God is giving you spanking, take it like that and pray that God, I thank you. Because many of us here today, we need spanking from the Lord. Spanking is a warning. God is warning you. God is bringing you back to track. That is why David said that your rod and your staff, it will comfort me. It will lead me to righteousness. Mm -hmm. Bible says that David was a man of his own heart. He loved David so much that whenever David sinned, he come back and pray that God have mercy. How many people today that go before God and say that God have mercy? I have sinned against you. Have mercy on me. Have mercy, but we are not doing that. Today, Christianity, God, I need. God, I want. God, I need. God, help me. God, I need. God, help me. My friend is that. He is sad. A Christian beggar, you beg too much. You beg too much. Stop begging. And thank God for the way you are. Thank God. You are looking so fine and beautiful. Is it not true? Yes. Why don't you give thanks given unto the Lord? Yes. And continue begging. You are not satisfied the way that you are. You want to be a king. You want to be a queen. No. Stop begging. You have to stop begging and give thanks unto the Lord. The way that we are, the way that I am, I love it so much. You can say anything about me, but I love the way that I am. Amen. I don't hate myself. Amen. Don't hate yourself. Amen. So that you go to a wrong way. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Let me hear one from Jeremiah. Through the Lord's mercies, uh -huh. we are not consumed. You see that? Whatever happened to Jeremiah, he said, through the mercies of God, I am not consumed. Through the mercies of God, you are not consumed. Amen. You are still alive. Amen. God is keeping you. Amen. So you have to be thankful unto the Lord. Amen. God has not provided for you. God has not given you a child. God has not get, never given you a husband. The wife is not coming. Everything is come, not coming. But it's a true the mercies of God. You are not consumed. You are still alive. Be happy that you are alive. God will provide. Amen. 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 Because of that, mm -hmm. now the prophet, even if he is not a prophet, he says he's a prophet. Because of your trouble, because of your trouble, when you go to him, bring this and bring that and bring that. Look here, don't be a new dog. Because new dog used to bark, but old dog don't bark. <laughs> My good friends said that all dogs, they do not do that. They don't bark because they were in... Listen. There is this mental hospital in Ghana called Ankafor. So they brought a young boy about 20 years that the mind was going around. And because of that, he was not here well. All the time, well, he was in the cells there, he was making noise. <laughs> so there was this man, old man, who has gone into crazy for about 30 years. So he was there, watching this 20 year old boy whom they have brought. Every day disturbing this old man. 
And the old man opened his mouth and said, Look, this new boy. Only two years of craziness. See what, see what you are doing. I have been crazy for 35 good years. And I am not shouting. You and new folk, and you are shouting. Hallelujah, somebody. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Because his compassion failed not. Because his compassion and his mercies, it failed not. God is good, my children and my soul. God is so good. Give thanks only. When you go before God, don't ask. Because God knows what you are going through. He knows what he has to give you. Don't ask. But the only thing is to do what? To thank God. How many of you? I want to see by your hand. This morning you wake up, you thank God. You say, God, I thank you. How many? How many? The first thing that you wake up in the morning, you say that, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. You start to laugh. Because it is not everybody at that very time have lifted up his head. Many would sleep. The following day, they are no more. The following day, they are no more. But you, God, the message of God is so good on you. And look at you, how beautiful you are today. Give thanks and praise unto the Lord. Because the Lord is so much. Stop asking that. Don't be a beggar before God. Because you have an access to go through. You have an access to go to the Lord. But God knows what you are going through. He will provide at its own time. The time that you deserve. He will provide. Yesterday I, I said a story. It is not a story. It is true. The boy is from my own town. The mother of the boy and my mom were friends. This boy bought a BMW at, uh, at Brescia. He bought a BMW at Brescia. The junior brother doesn't know how to drive. He took the, the car trying to do what? To ride. The sister was standing there. And the car was going instead of him to brake. He pressed the accelerator and he killed his own sister. It wasn't time for you to buy the BMW. But because of worldly mentality, you bought it. You are not ready. God doesn't want you to be rich today. But because your friend is rich, you also want to be rich. Do you know why he got his richness? Now today you see, you hear, 23 old boy, he is dead. He is so rich that nobody knows where he took the money. Did you want to arm robbery? Where did you take your money? Many, many now are looking for money. They don't care their life anymore. Man is not interested in life again. All that man needs is money. I want. It's money. I want. It's money. But my sister, my brother, I tell you that. I love everyday living more than to get money. Everyday living is so good and nice. They look you, they say you are handsome. They look you, they say you are beautiful. Every day living. But tomorrow you make money and tomorrow they will not see you again. Where is you? Are you at the end? Let me hear you. They are new every morning. Mm -hmm. Great is your faithfulness. Great is the faithfulness of God. God is so faithful. God is so faithful unto his children. He will never abandon you. Now, after Jeremiah going through all this, going through all these things, God had something in a package for Jeremiah. Now, go to Jeremiah chapter 1, the verse 7, the last scripture. Let's listen. Look the package of Jeremiah. After going through, wait, after telling God that you have made me to drink vinegar, after you have made my chains heavy, Oh, you are in the danger. Nobody comes for me. Even I have become a derision to my own people. I have become the song of the day. People see me and sing. Now, look here, Jeremiah. Look at what God gave to Jeremiah. Cutting the short, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10. Listen. Verse 10. See, I have this set. He said, listen, Jeremiah, see. 
Jeremiah, see this very day at the end of your problems, at the end of your problem, what you are going through, what you have gone through. This very day, uh -huh. I have this day set you over the nations. I have kingdom. set you over the nations and kingdom. God is going to set you over kingdoms. God is going to set you over nations. God is going to cause you to uproot. God is going to cause you oh, to load every loader that is in your family. Amen. It is time for us to stop begging from the Lord. Don't beg. I will not beg you. The Lord himself will see that. I have to give out. Don't ask. You are not having. God know. You are sick. God know. You are not working. God, he knows. No, so no, no. He knows. These are the things that are the, the, the force, the false prophets are using today to steal your money, to take your life off. Because you want it so easily. You don't want to wait upon the Lord. Nobody wants to wait upon the Lord. We need so fast. And because of that, the prophet, because of that, he said, look, bring this one. Bring that one. Where in the Bible do you find it? Don't enter into that place again. Stop. Don't ask anybody. Don't tell your story. But God knows your story. Amen. How many of you will give thanks unto God? God, I thank you. I praise you. I worship you. Amen. God will remember you. Amen. But if you go before God, I want to, Lord, He is going, you know, I'm behind, you. Lord, remember me, oh, Father God. This, you see, when we come to prayer meeting, we don't know what to pray over. You will see that morning time, you will wake up. All that you do is to slap the devil. The devil is there. The devil is there for about 2,000 years. Now he is old. He has no teeth again. He doesn't bite. But you think that the, the devil is biting. So all that you do is to beat him. I beat you. I slap 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 you. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Allow the enemy to go. At times the Bible says that we should not be ignorant. But at times we have to let him go his own way. Give thanks unto the Lord. Praise the Lord somebody. And the Lord will do whatever that he wants to do for you. In Jesus' name. God bless you.